Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The first, first statement I want to make is more in, in sorrow than in anger. I'll get to the anger part in a minute. The sorrow part is that Director Coates, in response to a question from Senator Collins, you gave an eloquent, factual statement of the activities of the Russians and the fact that they're continuing around the world and that they're a continuing threat to this country. All of you have agreed to that. If only the President would say that. I understand the President's sensitivity about whether his campaign was in connection with the Russians, and that's a, that's a separate question, but there is no question. We've got before us the entire intelligence community that the Russians interfered in the election in 2016. They're continuing to do it, and they're a real imminent threat to our elections in a matter of eight or nine months. My problem is I talk to people in Maine who say the whole thing is a witch hunt and it's a hoax because the president told me. I just wish you all could persuade the president as a matter of national security to separate these two issues. The collusion issue is over here, unresolved. We'll get to the bottom of that. But there's no doubt, as you all have testified today, and it w we cannot confront this threat, which is a serious one, with a whole of government response when the leader of the government continues to deny that it exists. Now, let me get to the anger part. The anger part involves cyber attacks. You have all testified that we're subject to repeated cyber attacks. Cyber attacks are occurring right now in our infrastructure all over this country. I am sick and tired of going to these hearings, which I've been going to for five years, where everybody talks about cyber attacks, and our country still does not have a policy or a doctrine or a, a, a strategy for dealing with them. And this is not a criticism of the current administration. The prior, I'm an equal opportunity critic here. The prior administration didn't do it either. Admiral Rogers, until we have some deterrent capacity, we are going to continue to be attacked. Isn't that true? Yes, sir. We have to change this current dynamic because we're on the wrong end of the cost equation here. And we are trying to fight a global battle with our hands tied behind our back. Uh, Director Coates, you have a stunning statement in your report. They will work to use cyber operations to, to achieve strategic objectives unless they face clear repercussions for their cyber operations. Right now, there are none. Is that not the case? There are no repercussions. We have no, we have no doctrine of deterrence. How are we ever going to get them to stop doing this if all we do is patch our software and try to defend ourselves? Those are very relevant questions, and um, uh, I think everyone, not only at this table, but in every agency of government, understands uh, the threat that we have here and the impact already being made through these cyber threats. Um, uh, we. Our role as the intelligence community is to provide all the information we possibly can as to what is happening so our policymakers can take that, uh, including the Congress, and uh, shape uh, policy as to how we are going to respond to this and deal with this in a whole of government way. It just never seems to happen. Director Pompeo, you, you understand this issue, do you not? We are not going to be able to defend ourselves from cyber attacks by simply being defensive. We have to have a doctrine of deterrence. If they strike us in cyber, they are going to be struck back in some way. It may not be cyber. I, I would agree with you. I would also argue that, um, and while I can't say much in this setting, I would argue that uh, your statement that we have done nothing does not reflect the responses that, uh, frankly, some of us at this table have engaged in and the United States government has engaged in both before and after this administration, excuse me, but both during and before this administration. But deterrence doesn't work unless the other side knows it. The doomsday machine in, the, in, in uh, Dr. Strangelove didn't work because the Russians hadn't told us about it. It's true that, that it's important that the adversary know it, but it is not a requirement that the whole world know it. And the adversary does know it, in your view? Uh, I'd prefer to save that for another form. Well, I believe that this country needs a, a, a clear doctrine. What is a cyber attack? What is an act of war? What will be the response? What will be the consequences? And right now, I haven't. I, Sen Senator, I agree. Years, I haven't seen it. I, I, I agree with you. We, we collectively, it, it is, um, 
it, it is a complicated problem given I, the nature include of include us, by the way. Yes, I, I would too. And as when as I sat as a member of the House of Representatives for six years, I take responsibility for not having been part of solving that too. There is a lot of work here to do. We do need a U.S. government strategy and clear authorities to go achieve that strategy. I appreciate it. I, I just don't want to go home to Maine when there's a serious cyber attack and say, well, we, we never really got to it. We knew it was a problem, but we had four different committees of jurisdiction and we just couldn't work it out. Yes, sir. That's not going to fly. Yes, sir. Thank you, gentlemen, for your service. Senator, I might just add that um, we don't want to learn this lesson the hard way. We 9-1-1 took, took place because um, we were not coordinating our efforts. We are now coordinating our efforts, but uh, we didn't have the right defenses in place because the right information was not there. Our job is to get that right information to the policymakers and get on with it uh, because uh, it's just common sense. If someone is attacking you and there's no retribution or response, it's they're just going to incentivize more contacts. Right. It, so right now, they get a lot of, there are a lot of blank checks. There's a lot of things that we need to do. Director Coates, thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.